If we have healthy cells, we have a healthy body. And that's true for the blood also. Hi, I'm Dr. Peter Minky. This is Minky Wellness. And we're going to talk today about the cells that are in the bloodstream and it's t uh, get in touch with that uh, aspect of the blood. Okay, we've been talking about the blood and how it carries oxygen and, and get carbon dioxide and, and delivers water and nutrients uh, you know, to the tissues. But we've also got you know, some, some actual cells that are in the blood. And mainly we're going to talk about red blood cells, platelets and and white blood cells okay so those are our, and i'm not going to go into any more detail than that when we get to the immune system we might do a, you know a little bit more about the different kinds of immune cells and get a little bit more familiar with that but um but for now we're going to just kind of keep it simple now the red i mean all these cells are produced in the body in different tissues mainly in the bone marrow uh, and so we can kind of talk a little bit more about that as well and start again. But we're, we're, we're kind of crossing over into other systems, but then, you know, that's the way the body is. We're not, we're not uh, so delineated. Everything's kind of one big, uh, you know, one big integrated piece. So we're, we just, you know, it's, it's somewhat artificial to say, oh, we're going to just talk about this system, but not the other one, okay? So the red blood cells you might be familiar with in terms of you know thinking of the blood that's what makes blood red uh, they're the red blood cells and they're red because they have heme so heme is a uh, iron containing molecule and it's the iron that makes everything look red if you look at rust uh, you know the the you know just a, a piece of iron that's rusting it, it has a reddish color and that's definitely where the red is coming from in terms of our red blood cells so we you know pretty pretty easy to to understand how that works so heme and hemoglobin uh, so uh, heme is the protein that that or the the part of the, referring to the the iron heme refers to iron and hemoglobin is a four part uh, protein that binds the iron and that is what allows carrying of oxygen so we can be more specific and talk about iron metabolism and production of red blood cells and health of red blood cells because those are all critical parts as we get a little bit more detailed into the cellular aspects of the the biology of our blood and that always excites me um, so the the other thing is so the real red blood cells and those get produced in the bone marrow particularly in the flat bones uh, and so the flat bones are the skull and the hips uh, and so that's where those those being are being produced they get recycled uh, or repaired and recycled or washed or pulled out of they get damaged you know they don't live very long and they get damaged uh, and they, they get the old ones get pulled out and that gets processed through the liver and the liver is supposed to reclaim the uh, the iron okay and, and so there's that process of getting that iron back in circulation so we're back to the liver again uh, with uh, you know understanding again how much the liver does and we'll do a lot more of that next month on the liver but uh, you know so again we're just going to kind of pull the pieces we need forward uh, as we go along so these red blood cells what's interesting about them is that they don't have any nuclei so they don't live very long they're produced just for the, the sake of of having this um, uh, delivering oxygen and uh, you know the b iron will bind the oxygen and release the oxygen in under certain pressures uh, uh, pressure differentials and certain conditions so it's uh, it, it, the a very thin uh, sort of disc shaped cells uh, and they're very quite very they're very small and they will you know move very quickly uh, through and they go all the way through the capillary bed so when we talked about the the veins and how they're the you know the veins go down or the, the tubes go from larger to smaller and the smallest tube is a capillary that capillary is so small that it only passes one red blood cell one erythrocyte the red blood cell is called the erythrocyte one red blood cell at a time so that's how small we're down to very 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 small uh detail when we're talking about getting, getting down to those capillary beds okay um so the the if if the red blood cells sound small it's the platelets are even smaller they're actually not even full cells they're more like cell fragments and the platelets you might understand as being those uh the, there's an entire system or cascade of signaling for for platelet uh, aggregation which is what makes clotting okay so when we're talking about platelets we really are talking about blood clotting and how well the the blood clots in response to 
uh, a wound, for example, when the wound, when the body gets cut, you know, the skin gets cut, things start bleeding, and we've got a, the, you know, the blood responds by creating uh, a, a, a clot. I mean, it puts a fibrous material, thrombin, and and, and other uh, proteins accumulate at that spot. Spot when the proteins start to get activated, they send a signal to attract uh, the the white blood cells. I'm sorry, the platelets. White blood cells also because the white blood cells are coming in to help with repair and to clean up. Usually if there's a cut, there's bacteria that have to be dealt with or some kind of, you know, a foreign body being dealt with. Uh, the platelets come in, aggregate, and then form a barrier and a clot, and, it, and the healing process can, you know, goes on from there. So these little platelets, okay, these are something that when we get a blood test, we get tested for the amount of red blood cells we have. Um, they might even test, I think, for the size and shape of those. If they get weird, uh, then there's, there's some concerns for that. And then the platelets are a dip, typically a count. You know, we see how many platelets we have. And that's an indication of how well our blood will clot. And there are some certain conditions that you can have uh, where you, you know, even genetically, a lot of times there's, there's blood conditions that are in the genetic uh, type of, of illness where the body's not producing the correct amount or type of these types of, of platelets, and so we've got issues. Um, we're not really gonna address any of that here, but we're just gonna talk about basically the body's ability to make these cells and keep them healthy. And so again, these platelets are little almost uh, cell fragments, and they're made in the bone marrow of the long bones uh, you know, of the body. So you know, the shaft uh, bones, the, the femurs and arms, all these that's inside of those, the yellow marrow, that's where the white, uh, the platelet cells are manufactured. When we get to the white cells, those are manufactured more in the immune system, uh, the, the thymus uh, and the spleen, uh, and and so those are the what we typically think of as immune cells, and they kind of run around to they also join up or, or get attracted to the same types of wounds and injuries that the platelets would get attracted to, and that's uh, they go in there to eat up and chew. They're like little amoeba and they crawl around and eat up the thing. So there's a lot of different things that will affect the health of these cells, but let's talk about from a wellness perspective. All of these cells are, are very, very susceptible to membrane damage because they act as single cells. They're floating around as single cells or cell fragments and it, the, the cell membranes of those, are, that's the only thing they have. If those get stiff, disrupted, or whatever, they'll pop. If they get weak, they'll pop and break, and you end up with problems, okay, with weak, weakness in those cells. So it's different. If you think of a skin cell, it's surrounded by other cells. So if the membrane is kind of weak on a skin cell, there's already a protection uh, around it because it's completely surrounded on all sides with, with other cells. So it's kind of a built-in protection mechanism, but when you have weak membranes uh, in the blood cells, those things will pop and they're gone. There's nothing to protect them. So membrane integrity becomes a huge issue when we're talking about our blood cells. And so we're back to, yeah, you guessed it, talking about membrane fluidity and how amazing the essential oils are and then also how damaging the uh, you know other things can be to our membrane fluidity. When we oxidize our membranes, uh, the membrane gets stiff and brittle and, and things don't work so well. When we use partially or eat partially hydrogenated vegetable oil, we get stiffened membranes. And so we've got problems if we are bad diet and a lot of chemicals and junk that are in our bloodstream that make it into the bloodstream, then we're, we end up damaging or weakening the very, the very nature of our blood, which is the cells that run around in there, okay? The other thing that can really damage um, the the integrity of the the membrane system, particularly in the immune system category, because the immune system has these unique these cells that actually move. They're like little amoeba, and that movement is disrupted by metal toxicity, aluminum, lead, mercury. All those will actually disrupt the ability of that membrane system to move, and so it prevents the white blood cell from being able to crawl. And it, that's an important function for it to be able to move through tissue and into and get to a spot and eat up bacteria and all that. So we get basically an ineffective immune system. We can't get our repair mechanisms going if we've got a metal toxicity. So metal detoxes in the body through sulfur for the most part and vitamin C. Hmm, where would I get sulfur and vitamin C? Oh, that's why we started with sulfurzyme and super C. And so remember back in the in the so if you skipped ahead and you just got to this part because you think, oh, that's an interesting title, I'll look at that. 
you really want to go back and start at the beginning of this program and take your sulfur zyme and super C because that's what fundamentally builds up. The other nutrient that's really useful for building healthy blood are the B vitamins and some other cofactors that come in with the manufacturing of these blood cells. So it becomes, again, very important to vitamin K, vitamin D, uh, you know, all of these are, are important in the process of building blood and platelets and other kinds of, of and the whole, the whole cascade of, of um, you know, the, the of clotting factors and all the rest of that stuff. So here's, again, where our multivitamin, that's why I'm recommending we start on this month when we talk about building the blood, we start with the multivitamin master formula because it just gives us that broad spectrum and we get all of our, our fat soluble vitamins, we get all of our basic water soluble vitamins, we get all of our B vitamins in significant portions, but not overly shot. I mean, sometimes we get too many of these B vitamins in some of these products. But one of the amazing things that all of these vitamins and minerals that are in the master formula are completely plant derived. They're not from coal tar or, or some kind of derivative of uh, petroleum, which is where the basis of some of these, most of these other B vitamins that are manufactured to come from. Okay, so uh, so here's our, that's the lay of the land. There's the information. I know some of you like the information, so the science behind all that, but let's do some breathing, just a few breaths, and make that connection to really get healthy red blood cells, healthy platelets, and healthy white blood cells so that our uh, really get that vitality feeling that that to come in and, and strengthen and, and vitalize, revitalize the blood itself at the cellular level. So I'm going to breathe in and I'm going to connect to that blood that moves all the way through my body. And I'm going to focus on the red blood cells. And in fact, I could, um, uh, I, I'm just going to do one, one at a time. So I'm going to breathe into the red blood cells. And I'm going to give them that vitality, soak that oxygen into the red blood cells and uh, and help the, the healthy membranes and have them absorb the nutrients that they need in the liver. So I'm gonna breathe into my bones and, and breathe that nutrients, those raw materials, the iron. So absorb iron out of the gut, okay? And make sure that the, that the iron gets where it needs to to manufacture the red blood cells in the bones. So I'm gonna mainly focus on my hips, shoulder blades, and skull for the, for the iron. So the shoulder blades, the scapula back here, the hips and the skull are where the red blood cells are manufactured. So I'm gonna send the iron and nutrients into there. Now the long bones are gonna be our platelets, so I'm gonna send the you know, vitamins and minerals that are in our blood into the long bones in the arms, the center, and in the legs. And feel that infusion into the, the so the platelets, and then the, the white cells made in the spleen, which is over here on the left, underneath the deep, uh, deep to the, in the left side. And then the liver is over on the right. And again, just kind of revitalizing. So I'm just making that connection between the blood and those organs, which are what uh, uh, help to build that blood. And so again, I'm gonna bring out healthy red blood cells, healthy platelets, and they can just, they, each one of these has a different flavor. So you start to breathe in, you realize, oh, that really feels feels different, looks different. I don't know how, you, how you're relating to it, but to me, it just feels different when I breathe into the red blood cells. Oxygen carrying capacity, breathe into the platelets has a completely different feel. There's just a totally, and then the white blood cells. Again, totally different function, different feel to what I'm, my intention. So I really connect, as you start to build this connection, you start to feel how these things really are different and your intention and your connection through breath can, can, can identify, start to identify that difference. You, maybe this doesn't, not right, I've been doing this for years, so don't, don't be frustrated if this doesn't seem to come really naturally, but those are your three main blood types. And of course, I wanna get those to move. I want those to move through the tissue, I mean, through the, the veins and the arteries, through the, the cardiovascular, the vascular system and feel that travel. So that's just a really brief connection to the, you know, intellectually on some understanding of that and how we connect back to our nutrients and uh, detoxing, get rid of our metals, get the, you know, all the, the that um, heavy metals to get out of our system. We have mercury and lead that come in all the time. And then we revitalize and build healthy blood cells, red, white, and 
uh, and the platelets. So just a little connection to the actual cellular machinery of the blood. Hope that feels good to you and start to make that connection. Happy wellness. We'll see you tomorrow.